This is Fairlines Squadron 68. This is actually what I would call the Mark II, what they're calling the reimagined. So what they've done is they've taken their Squadron 68, which came out in 2019. They've taken a load of feedback from dealers and from the customers, the clients who are actually using the boat, and they've gone right through this and really done some beautiful detailing on it and brought it right up to date. And one of the most obvious things, and the reason I'm starting up here, though we can't see it terribly well through the Fairline flags, is this new hardtop. And what's changed on this is that the spar that holds it up now slopes this way. And if you look, it actually flows right down through this sort of C pillar on the back end of the saloon, right down through the transom. Everything lines up beautifully. And you've also got these little three bars here, which all the squadrons have, just marks it out as a squadron. But we're going to get down on board. The interior on this is spectacular. I think you'll like that. But we're going to do the full tour on this one. So stick with me. I think you're going to like it. So here she is from water level. Now, the interior, I think, is the thing we're going to focus on first of all. But I do want to show you a couple of things on the outside before we go on board because there's a couple of details on here which are not obvious. And the most discreet of those is actually right up at the bow. Now, all planing boats have what they call chines. They are the sort of like spray rails that come down and give the boat lift. If we look at these boats over here, you'll see exactly what I mean. Right at the bow, you can see it on all of them. And they're great, you need those on a planing boat. However, you do get slap against them of the waves, even in here, I don't know whether you can hear it, possibly not with the wind blowing, but basically all the ripples slap against those chines and when you're in the forward cabin you can hear it. Well not on here because, look at this, they're all under the waterline, there's no spray rails coming up. I'll show you over there again and you can see the difference. Other thing that's changed down here is the window line. So what they've done here is they've brought, I like this little illuminated Fairline badge on the side by the way, They've brought this one. It used to come this way and now they sloped it that way. And again, it all tones in what I was saying earlier with the way that all of this is in unison. It just looks really sleek. Anyway, let's hold on board. This is, of course, going to be the full tour. So we're doing the interior, the flybridge, the decks, the crew cabin, the engine space, the lot. And we're stepping on right here on the bathing platform. This is actually a 500 kilogram lift. It'll take a Williams 345. And again, the detailing starts straight away. Normally on these, as they go up and down, they have to have what are effectively vents that the water can go through. So as they push down into the water, the water can actually come up through them. And you normally see them like on the back of this boat over here, for example. On this, they are virtually invisible. They are there and you can just about see, there we are. You can maybe see them through there, maybe see the water through, but they've actually managed to incorporate them so that they are pretty much invisible. Also back here, even with this down, you've still got a walkway across here and then if we look in here just sort of going past it this then is the controls for that high load platform you've also got shore power inlets tucked away out of the way in here this one here is actually a seat that folds out like so so you can sit there at water level that's a nice feature that's a window up above it and that's for the crew cabin we'll come back to that as we go around the decks i think we'll head on board first of all because this is what I really want to show you. As we step on here, straight away, you've got things like this beautiful detailing in here. And again, the details, the engineering details that have gone into this. I'm just going to show you over here. When you step on the boat, you might have been away for a month. It might be dark. You want to get on board, unlock your door and get inside. And, and of course, you end up fiddling around with your phone trying to find your torch. Not on here, because this overhead button here switches these lights here and it does it whether the power is on or off so even if the main circuit breakers are off you can still light this up and get yourself in without having to stumble around trying to find the, the key holders to put your key into also down here these are big lockers in underneath here so those are for fenders or ropes or whatever you can also put a life raft underneath the center one there these stools are an optional extra on this one. This is a very, very high spec boat. We've undone this one because we want to get to the engine room in a minute, but these actually lock down with these turn screws here. That's what these little fellas here are for. So they stay in place when you're out at sea. And again, we're seeing straight away some of the details of this fluting that they've put into here, just to make the whole thing a bit more interesting. It's got a lift up window. So this all opens right out. That's what gives you this bar area. This of course slides open. In fact, there is an option 
where you can have this so it comes back and folds out so you can completely open this area if you want it. And then over on this side, just as we're going past, this is your manual bilge pump. There's electric pumps, of course, as standard. Uh, your fire extinguisher pull is here for the engine room and these are fuel shutoffs for the engines and the generator. So it's all the kind of safety kit where it can be easily reached and you don't end up with stuff being piled on top of it. Let's head on in because there's lots to see. Now the layout in here has changed. They've actually made this galley area a different shape and a little bit larger. There's more workspace here, for example. And again, some lovely features. One thing I particularly like is these drawer fridges because these open like so, so you can keep all your stores in there and you've got four of them. But what's interesting is you can actually program these on here. So you could say, okay, I want that one and that one to be fridges and this one and this one to be freezers. We could have the bottom two as freezers. You could have them all as freezers if you want to and not have the fridge there. So it means that you can actually set this out depending on how you're using the boat and how much frozen food you've got, that kind of thing, and optimize that so the cooling is exactly how you want it. Little details like this are nice. This has got the coffee maker in there and then your cups for that go up on top and then around here we have got obviously drawers for your um, cutlery in there I won't open them all we get the idea I'll open that one though because that one is a dishwasher and then we've got and then we've got the all-electric cooking here more storage over here sinkers over here like so, and in fact what's quite neat is they've put a chopping board on the back of that one. And then over on this side you've got this big dining table. This folds out. I'll just move that one out of the way a moment. Let's pop that up there. So you can have it as it is now, but this will fold out. And look at the woodwork on here, look at the way the drain flows through and the way they put this maple section in the centre just to add a little bit of interest and the quality of this is all hand finished it's absolutely beautiful little attaches like these little rubber inserts here so that when that closes it doesn't rattle or scratch and then of course you've got the settee around behind it and then these stools so you can sit all the way around it a lot of lighting options in here so you've got lighting down underneath here you've got lighting underneath all of these you've also that's all mood lighting but then up in the center you've got the main lights like this but more mood lights up in places like this so you can just dim this whole thing right down obviously these are on dimmers anyway but if you just want to have the low level lighting you can do that where it's just down underneath the furniture and in these little overhead fellows and the headlining as well has changed some nice detailing there it's all 3d effect the way that they've done this done a really nice job with that this has all changed in here one thing i do like is they've gone away from the sort of really rigid set square 90 degree angles so this for example just slopes across here and into here at an angle rather than being at 90 degrees and that just makes this a really nice lounging area you can have another table here you can have a high low table there so if you want to dine there you can do this is what you get as standard um, there's more bits of storage tucked away underneath here. There's a high-low TV that powers out of there. And then these circular fellows, these are vents, and they're actually directional. You can move these around so that you can get the angle of the air exactly how you want it. But that is a lovely big area, and it's all on one level, all the way through, which is nice. Let's head on a bit further forward. Another thing to talk about is the hi-fi equipment on here, because standard is a fusion system but as an option you can upgrade to a upgraded fusion system or the top of the range is Sonos which is completely invisible apart from one trick little thing because if we look in here this is a little charging dock and these are little Sonos separate speakers they're waterproof they bluetooth to your phone and uh, you can take that with you. you can take that onto the bathing platform take it into the tender as you go ashore and to get a bit of spray on them it's absolutely fine what you don't want to do is drop in the water there because I did ask and they don't float but yeah they sit in there charged up so if you want to use one pull it out bluetooth it to your phone and away you go a bit more storage then in places like this oh I didn't show you as well actually just went right past it the uh, crockery there's a catch right down underneath there and that one then is all of the Fairline crockery right next to the dining area 
and all secured in place you can see with these pins so it doesn't move around when you're out at sea. What else can I show you? Loads more to see actually. This I like. Most of these boats tend to be owner operated. You can have a crew of course but a lot of them are used by the owners and their families or friends. So they've created this raised area here and it means that if you step up onto here you are at the same height as the helm, you've got a great view out of these windows and it's a brilliant place to sit when the boat's underway and you can chat with whoever's driving the boat and it means everyone can be together up at the helm and see what they're doing. Huge one-piece windscreen as you can see and if we come across here this is the helm position they've actually moved this whole thing about 40 centimeters further forward to create more space there used to be a lot of dead space in front of this which was wasted this sort of details that have gone into this one it's remarkable look at the woodwork underneath here again all handmade and hand varnished and polished it's a little stainless steel rail there's red lighting under here so that at night this can be illuminated but it doesn't spoil your night vision and then across here we've got baron stern thruster on this one three 16 inch screens you can option this however you want from one up to three and then this display is obviously whatever you want it to so we're on charts at the minute you can have radar on here for example that's that one up there engine instrumentation is here but also on here we've got this which is the actual control for the boat so this is currently on um, electrics so it's showing you battery voltages and that kind of stuff we can then move across from here so we hit that one there for example that takes us to the uh, levels so water levels and fuel levels uh, we can go into um, that's electrics we were on before there we go lighting is on here that one is all things like the bilge alarms we can see they're green which is how you want them um, black water tank full all that kind of stuff that's all on there as well so that's how that works as even on here um, where are we? Where did I see it? That one there. That's a reversing camera. You can actually see the back of the boat through that one. Trim tabs are here. Um, another thing to show you is the fact that obviously this is all electronic switching, but what they have done, if we come over here, is they've kept the physical switches as well as backups. There we go. So that is your uh, analog gauges for fuel and water. You've got your um, your battery switches are across here, you've got master switches for lighting, you've got uh, bilge pumps down the bottom here, and so forth. So everything there gives you a manual backup switching and gauges, should you ever need it. And the last thing to show you here, which is rather clever, and it's another new thing, is would you believe, because it's not obvious, there's a side access door. So what we're going to do here is pull the right bit of cord, I don't know where that is. <laughs> oh, I think it's that one. There we go. I shall edit that out later. If we come around here now, we can lift that one, push it there, and that whole thing swings out. And that gives you really good access out onto the side deck. Some of these live jackets here at the moment. But you can see there's a step there up, out, and straight on out. But it's really discreet. It doesn't look like there's anything there. I think that's great. Close that one back up. And then this one here is air conditioning controls for this area as well. Oh, one more thing to show you down in the centre. This is nice. So we've got new helm seats here, but this little area here, if you drop your phone onto there, nothing happens. <laughs> there we go. That is uh, inductive battery charging. Okay, let's press on a bit further because there's loads more to show you on here. We head on down here again you can see that fair line detailing you can see why these are expensive boats the way this is all beautifully made around here and it's backlit as well at night that's basically a handrail so you've got something to hold on to as you go down you've got one on the other side as well and it's all lit but just look at that woodwork stunning okay let's head on down so this brings us down to a lobby area now this is quite interesting because this is a three cabin layout and what you've got on this one is a standard, there's a day heads in here as an option. 
you can have this utility room. I think this is brilliant. I don't know whether you remember, but I did a video on a Fairline Squadron 58, and that had a utility room down underneath the galley. Everyone loved that. This is a bit nicer because you've got full height straight into here, which is great. There is a massive uh, fridge freezer in here, so you've got backup cooling. This is all Miele. And then a load more storage. So if you're going away on the boat for a month or two, this is just brilliant. And I don't know if you remember, we were all very impressed with the fact that the other one had an ironing board. Well, it's back. The Fairline ironing board is back. That drops down like that. That flips over. <laughs> How about that? That's absolutely brilliant. There we go. Okay. Let's head on a bit further. So as I say, standard that is a day heads, and there's a further option. You can have a fourth cabin there with bunk beds in if you want. So there's a lot of choice there. You can spec these boats and get them just how you want them. These beautiful door handles. And look also at the fact there's no catch here. It's just smooth and magnetic. So when that closes, there we go. That's now shut, and it just opens like that. But there's nothing to catch yourself on there. Let's head on a bit further down through the boat. This one here is your VIP cabin. There is another option for this. You can, this is the day heads and also the ensuite to that cabin. You can uh, lose that and have that back here instead and then have that door brought back to here and have this as a massive, great big cabin in here. So if you want a real sort of owner's cabin style cabin as well as the main owner's cabin, you can have it. But this is how it comes as standard. Double bed in here. And again, you're starting to see things like that maple finish across here, like this fluted woodwork. It's just stunning. TV in here as well. This is all linked up to the Sonos system. So this one has got Sonos speakers in the ceiling. There's an incredible amount of speakers in here, actually. There's 23 speakers on this boat. There's 10 amps and there's three subwoofers. So it really is quite an extraordinary hi-fi system. You've got um, wardrobe there, a little bit of storage down by the beds, drawers down underneath as well. So these are down like so. More little changes. This used to be walnut around here with a sort of like a vinyl or leather insert they've made this into this lovely soft material just to sort of take the edge off it a little bit make it a bit softer a bit cozier there is access up through there that's an opening hatch up above and then over here again you've got big illuminated wardrobe but you've also got access to the ensuite so that's straight through here really nice size you've got the separate shower area so that's on in through there. And this door here takes you straight out to the main passage. So this one becomes the day head during the day. So people can get to a toilet without going to anybody's cabin if they want to. Nicely done, isn't it? Okay, let's close that over. We'll come back out through here. I mentioned this is a three cabin layout. So cabin three then is over here. And this one actually has an ensuite as well. So each of the cabins has its own ensuite. So you don't really need that day head, but nonetheless, you have got a day head access, as I mentioned, to that forward one if you want it. This again, got the separate shower in through there. There's a big wardrobe. There's another thing to show you in here, which is really clever. That's the wardrobe like so. But this is single beds. And you can see there's a little table in between them here and then switches down by the bed so that you can switch the lights on and off obviously without getting out of bed so that's a nice touch however if you want a double bed there's a button <laughs> somewhere here it is check this out and there you go double bed now what's brilliant is you've lost the bedside table you've lost the light switch but you haven't because it's appeared over here that's a mirrored uh, switch to that one on that side and a little bedside table. Cool, huh? Let's power that one back. That is a nice feature.
big hole windows in here. That's an opening section, that little square bit at the back there. But yeah, nice cabin. And again, you've got that lovely low level mood lighting about the place as well. We'll come back out of here and head aft. This takes us down to the owner's cabin. There's a couple of things to show you down here because on this side is the washer dryer. And on this side, that is all the switch panels. So circuit breakers for everything where it can be easily reached. And then this takes us through to the owner's cabin. Full beam of the boat, absolutely beautiful. And again, you're seeing these little details, the way they've done the woodwork across here, across here as well. In fact, what's interesting is, on the original 68, this would have been all wood all the way across here. They've put these upholstered panels in now. They're just softening it all up, just making it a bit cosier, a bit more homely. Or homey, as they say in America. I got told that homely in America is actually an insult. In the UK, homely means nice. So over here, little settee, so I to tuck yourself away. Storage either side of that one. And you've got this beautiful dressing area over on this side. And again, look at the way that the grain matches perfectly all the way through here. This is walnut wood on this one, high gloss. Just looks fantastic. And this, again, little neat touches, but you've got the stool here. You can just pivot that out, and it's actually on a little hinge, stainless steel hinge just there so that it's not ever going to fly around when you're out at sea. Because the last thing you need when you're out at sea is loose stools. This one opens up like so. And again, that detailing, the way they've done all of this around here. You've got big drawers in here as well. Again, I won't open them all, but just to give you an idea, that one's full of cushions. And then back here, talking of cushions, this is a huge illuminated wardrobe, <laughs> but it's full of cushions. These are not all for the boat, I hasten to add. These are actually for a hospitality area for Fairline, but um, they've not actually been put out yet. So this is where they're living for the minute. And if that's not enough for you, there is a secret wardrobe. If we push this one on the correct side, <laughs> there we go. Another wardrobe in there, again, stacked full of cushions. And then the ensuite to this cabin, that's in here right across the rear bulkhead. And what's nice is the engine room is back here and the cabin is here. So you've got this whole barrier for the sound for anything running in the engine room. And in fact, that's reminded me of something. And it just goes to show the amount of detail engineering that goes into here. Most boats have a holding tank for the toilet waste to go into. This has two. And the reason it has two is so that you've got one that's back here for this uh, toilet area but then the ones further forward go into a forward holding tank and so you don't get anything running through the pipework under the bed at night. So it just keeps the noise down here to an absolute minimum. That's kind of behind the scenes engineering that you don't really notice, but nonetheless, that's the detail they've gone to. So in here, this is all storage up in behind here. Got this lovely sink. Love this tap here, that's really nicely done. That one down there is access to an engineering panel. <laughs> it's not access to an engineering panel, it's a panel that is access to engineering. Let's have a little look, see if I can get that up. You need to lift both really, but I think we can get away with it. Yep, there we go. So that just gets you into some of the uh, plumbing and that kind of stuff. A really substantial panel. And then of course you've got a lovely shower down here, and this one's got a rainfall shower in it. These windows, of course, they all have blinds on them. So if you're out at anchor somewhere and there's no one around, you can shower and get a wonderful view. But if you're in harbour, you can obviously get yourself a bit of privacy. That is a nice size, isn't it? OK, loads more still to show you. Let's press on a bit further. One thing I will mention, actually, in here is the mood light. I'm going to show you that, because there's two switches here. One of these will take out the overhead lights, and that's just giving us the mood lighting. These are individually switched, but you can see now down underneath here, you can see it up along the top of here, you can see it along here. So if we turn these ones off, there we go. That's how that works. 
see it under the bed there as well, even in places like around here. It's all very subtly done. And then these overhead lights, I'll switch those back on. You can see how they dim. If I hold my finger on the button. There we go, so you can bring those down as well if you want to. Fantastic, let's keep on going. Loads to see. So we'll come back up through here. That one again, well actually that one is storage, but there we go. You can lift that panel out there and get to more of the engineering spaces underneath. And see even here they've put a gas strut on it to hold that up. It's all in the details with these, it really is. Okay, we're going to come back around this way, back up here. Again, this beautiful woodwork. Stunning. That is nice, isn't it? Let's press on back. So we've got deck areas to do, we've got flybridge to do, we've got engine space to do, we've got crew cabin to do. So still plenty to see. We'll take a walk around the deck first of all. All of this is in the gel coat, all this grey. It's not spray painted, they've actually put that in the gel, so that should really last. These are these three feature fins that you get on the Fairlines. This is quite interesting, you've got the squadron here. These are the flags, that's a six and that's an eight for um, signal flags. So if you ever wondered why they've got these flags on them, that's what those mean. We'll head on forward, big glazing down here, and this of course is that side door that we saw from inside the boat. I mean it pretty much disappears on the outside, doesn't it? It's very nicely engineered. I love the way they've done things like this as well. It all just looks so good. Let's come right up onto the bow. So a lounging area up here. You can have a table here if you want it. That little fella there is a waterproof USB port, so you can plug your phone in and charge it. And this one here lifts up so that you can have seating here and people can sit all the way around. Or drop it down, of course, it's a sun pad. And that one there, we lift that one up, let's do it the other way. There we go, that is the hatch that's over that forward cabin. We'll come right on round to the front. We've got stainless steel cup holders here. These pop out, if we turn them, there we go, those are lighting. And these are for fenders or deck gear in here. And then right up to the front, you'll notice that all the anchor gear is concealed. The anchor actually, you can see it down underneath there, the stainless steel anchor sticking out. So it's completely flush out over here. Even the winch is hidden away down inside there. Okay, let's come back down this side. There's that huge one-piece windscreen and there's massive wipers. And these are for the washers, which I believe I'm right in saying are actually built into the blades. So the water comes, yeah, there we go, that's pipe work there. Water squirts straight out onto the blades. I'm just randomly hitting the screen. Okay, back down this side. And this time we'll take a turn around. This then is taking us up to the flybridge. Look at the way that this, rather than just a sort of a, a loose flying ladder as such, it's actually built inside of the moulding. So as you walk up here, you're completely protected. You've got the rail there, you feel really secure as you come up. And of course you've got the lighting in here as well, as you can see. This closes over because, first it gives you a completely secure area up there, of course, nobody can tumble down it, but also with that closed, you can put a canopy in around here and enclose this whole back deck if you want to. But we'll head on up this way. And you can see then this hard top from underneath. This is an optional extra on this one, so you don't have to have it but this is what you get. And in fact, there's also, what they've done is had this so it's sheltered, but there is an opening section, I'll show you that in just a moment. And then this back here is open in the sunshine. Now this is actually uh, loose furniture. So you could take this off, you could put steamer chairs here if you want to. It is secured down so it doesn't move around at sea because it goes down with these little thumb screws here. So that's how you would take it off. But that's a lovely area to sit on the back of the boat when you're not an Ocean Village Marina. Bar areas over here. I think that's an option if I remember right. There's a lot of options on this one. It's a really high spec boat, as is that. That's the ice maker. But then as standard, you get a fridge, which is in, not that one, because that's the big. There we go, that's the fridge. And then there's a sink here as well. 
these mouldings, everything's so smoothly finished, even on the inside where you don't normally see it. It is a quality item. If we come up here, you'll notice there's another bar area over here. You can have a TV in here. It's actually a splash-proof TV with a non-reflection screen, so you can actually see it up here. But without that, you've got then still storage, so plates and cups and all that kind of stuff, so you can cater for up here without going up and down the stairs looking for plates and things. There we go. Very nice. Again, you've got all that low-level mood lighting everywhere. And these pop-up lights are on here as well. Another thing actually that I'll show you while we're here, this button here, sunshade, if we hit that one, that rolls out from there so you've got more shade over the back. And even here, look, these are all stainless steel, these extending arms. It's a real quality job. And in fact, you can then have supports at the back end to really secure that if you want to leave it out on a more permanent basis. Let's wind that one back in for now. We'll come up to this end. This is nice. Again, mentioned earlier about it being an owner-operated boat for a lot of people. This means that everyone can gather here if you're using the upper helm and just really be all together, enjoy the ride, have a chat, check out the scenery. Just a wonderful place to be. You can have a table here that adjusts in height and make that into a sunbathing area if you want to, so that's another option. Twin helm seats here, and you can get in and through between them, which is nice. You don't have to shuffle past somebody who's at the helm to reach this seat here. And then again, you've got repeater screens across here. This is all on engine instrumentation at the minute, but you can change this to radar or that camera. Oh, that's the engine room, uh, actually, on this particular one. Um, so, yeah, and you can get to the Fairline system here as well. But, in fact, you have got a separate screen for that down here, so that's permanently on display. You don't need to get into it from here if you don't want to. Let's go back to uh, fuel. Yeah. There we go. So that's that one there. That's giving you uh, fuel economy, so litres per mile the fuel used, all that kind of stuff is all available on there. What else have we got here? Uh, bounce stern thrusters again, trim tab controls, there's more controls for here. Um, and then underneath this one, you've got, um, that's the remote control searchlight underneath there, and that one is an anchor chain counter, so you know how much anchor chain that you've got out. And again, you've got the control for the um, fire extinguishing system as well so you can see if that's discharged so that's that compass here as well of course great view out across the front of the boat from here and the other thing to show you is if i hit roof open There we go. If you want the open experience, then you can have it just by powering that back. On the previous one, they had slats, which looked really good, but they were never quite giving you that open boat experience. So a lot of people prefer this, where it opens up completely, and that's what they're now doing. Uh, track vision is up here on the top here for your satellite TV. Your uh, radar scanner is up there. Your antennas, all that kind of stuff, all up out of the way. Searchlight is up there as well. OK, let's go back down through here. Still plenty more to see. I think what we'll do is we'll do the crew cabin and then we'll finish up with the engine space. So we can come down here. You've got uh, power winches on this one. That's another option. These are rope bins in here so you can drop your lines out of the way. And look at the stainless steel work on here. This is the fair lead. So your rope goes from here and then out and that protects the gel coat. But the quality of finish on that is just a work of art. OK, we'll come back down here. And what we will find here is a couple of things. First of all, that one is a shower. So you've got a shower on the back of the boat when you come out from swimming. That's the control for it there. And I showed you that. I showed you that one, didn't I? The seat, yes I did. So, we want to go this way now. And that one, we need to push a little button here. This is going to be tricky with two hands, hang on. How <laughs> tricky with one hand, I should say. There we go, that's got it. So that rises up like so. And this is actually a really nice cabin. They call it a crew cabin, but you could certainly use this for overflow guests if you're owner operating because it's a decent cabin in here. It's nicely trimmed. You've got your air conditioning in here as well. You've got a little window at the back there looking out over the, uh, over the stern, over the bathing platform. There is 
big wardrobe in here and again look at how this has got the high gloss walnut it's all beautifully finished that is a decent cabin standing headroom in here as well and of course it has its own ensuite so that's in here a little bit smaller than the other ones but nonetheless there it is shower in there as well fantastic so that for a sub 70 foot boat that is a nice crew cabin cool okay i think engine space is the last thing now so let's drop that one back down you can see all the lighting underneath here now under the steps there we go I mentioned we'd unscrewed this stool on this side. That is so that we can just drop that one out of the way for a moment. And this is the route down to the engine space. Okay, here we go. So what we have in here is a pair of Caterpillar diesel engines. These are the C18 A-certs. They're 1,150 horsepower each. And they're going to give the boat over 30 knots. They reckon about 31 knots with this. And cruising really anything from 21 knots upwards up to about maybe 27, 28. And you're going to get a range, I'm guessing a little bit, but probably 250, 300 miles with those. Now there is another option. If 31 knots is not enough for you, they are offering the C32s, the bigger cat engines. They're 1,622 horsepower each. They haven't fitted those engines yet into one of these boats, but they're reckoning 35 knots plus. That's going to be a real flying machine. Fuel tanks are on the outside here. That's the automatic fire extinguishing system. There's a massive generator in here. That's across the back Cummings Onan generator. And if you come right back here, you've got some of the electrical systems. So the Vitron system here, for example, the inverter. These are for the bow and stern thruster override buttons. And then we can come right round here. That, I think I'm right in saying, is the air conditioning system. These are the engine exhaust. But I want to show you what's round here, because if we come right into this engineering space at the back, This one is fitted with a Seakeeper. So that is a stabilizing system. It's a gyro stabilizer. It spins at mega high speed in a vacuum. It's something like about 10,000 RPM, I think. It makes a centrifugal force, and that gives it something to push against and hold the boat level. So when it rocks, it counters the rocking. It keeps it all stable. So that's a nice thing. Again, it's an optional extra, but it's a lovely one to have. Here's the exhaust routing, down through here. And you remember that we actually saw the engines from one of those screens when we were looking at the helm. That is the camera for it up there. That little chap there. But that's a decent engine room, isn't it? It's come right up to this end. There we go. Load of headroom in here as well, as you can see. <laughs> and if I say I'm six foot two, everyone will say, stop telling us how tall you are. And if I don't say I'm six foot two, everyone will say, how tall are you? So there you go. And six foot two, but we definitely didn't say that. More circuit breakers across the back here, more electronics, master bolt system, all of that. That's all nice and get atable. Okay, let's come back out of here. And I think we'll drop that one down. And we'll pop that one back. And we'll screw that down in a moment. We'll go back into here because it is so beautiful. And I'm going to sit on that little seat up by the helm. And I am going to say massive thanks to Fairline Yachts. That's a really comprehensive tour. They've given me as much time as I want on this boat. It's great to give you a really thorough look at one of these because they're well worth seeing. And uh, huge thanks, of course, to you guys for watching. Oh, there is one more tiny thing. We are about to take it out for a spin, so watch out for that video coming soon. Take care. Bye-bye.